Welcome back to the Olive Oil Critic. I am Emily Lycopoulos and I am so excited to be diving in with you to taste all sorts of different olive oils and understand them from branch to bottle. Today we have a delicious oil to share. I'm so excited to taste it. Um, it's one of the, the Tuscan trio as they call it. It's from the Fanti family um, and they are an incredible family vineyard and olive grove in Tuscany. And Moriolo is one of the, the trio Tuscan varietals so if you see a classic Tuscan blend of oil, it will always be Frantoio, Licino, and Mariolo. Each of those three produce their own characteristics and add a vibrancy to the oil. It's typically very bitter and rich and green and, and solid peppery finish. It's definitely an intense olive oil when you taste it. And this is our chance to try just one of those varieties. So not the blend, but just the Mariolo on its own. So on the Fanti property, they have a beautiful, beautiful vineyard and have just over 8,500 trees. And these trees specifically are um, about 30 years old. So it's a, again, beautiful grove um, with great trees and they're getting there. You know, um, it takes 10 to 15 years for your trees to start producing consistently. And so these trees are now um, at the age where they are producing consistently, you know, they're well rooted. And one of the interesting things with Moriolo, a challenge with the variety itself is that it doesn't handle pruning very well. Olive trees have to be pruned quite significantly annually because they only produce fruit on second year growth. So they don't produce on first, don't produce it on third, only on second year growth. So it's important that the tree is pruned so that way the olives will keep producing consistently and you know, consistently all over the tree. <laughs> you have to make sure that the sun can get into the center, the wind can get, get through all of those pieces. Pruning is an art in and of itself. Um, something that I haven't even begun to start learning, but it is so technical and um, all of pruning is its own, its own world. But the Moriolo olive doesn't heal well from pruning and so pruning it is even more challenging because you can't prune it aggressively. It doesn't heal its wounds very quickly or bounce back from the pruning process. So um, something to consider when uh, trying the olives is that, you know, it is, every olive is a labor of love um, to create and every tree has its own nuances and uh, technical challenges. But one of the good things with Moriello is that it is a high producer, solid 20% um, yield with those olives. They're large, the droops are big and beautiful, um, and it is a high yield, which is really wonderful. Um, it started in Tuscany, the Moriello olive, but it's grown all over Italy now. So let's give a taste and see what this oil can share with us today. Mmm, green almond. Oh, it's so present right off the nose. Yeah, super green, some grass in there, but definitely those almond notes are delightful and so present. I wonder if they'll translate into the taste. Mmm, nice and peppery. Right from the front, you catch that pepper. Oh goodness, lots of William Cattle in this oil. Super present, super pungent, but also round and the bitterness isn't very present. Um, well, it's present, but it's not like intensely bitter. Um, lots of herbs, arugula in there, definitely the green almond on the front. Um, you get that fruitiness right off the bat before the pepper hits you and then it's like everything comes back again. That's what I love about the viscosity of olive oil and how it interacts with our taste buds is that it's not a one-time taste. So this oil, it's like it hits you right at the back and then it comes back to say, here, guess what? I have all of these other things to show you. Mm. Second taste again, you get that green almond right in the center. Artichoke as well. It's really round on the second taste. The peppery finish is still there, still lingering. Nice black pepper, strong, absolutely almost a capsicum finish. You can tell that there's a lot of antioxidants in this oil. It would have a great shelf life, really good longevity just because of the intensity of the, the antioxidant content. And this Moriolo 
it usually does combine well with frentoyo because the frentoyo adds probably more of the bitterness if you're thinking about the blends and then again enhances um, the oleanthal and the antioxidant content in the oil to give that Tuscan, Tuscan blend the um, oomph, <laughs> you know, classic taste that it has. But this definitely adds the uh, the green almond in the front, and it's really well rounded. It's beautiful on its own. It's really lovely. On its own. Trying to think of all of the things that I would use this oil for, and there are many. I would love to use this oil on, on fruit salads. Um, it would be wonderful in frostings because of that green almond flavor. I would love to use it in baking. Um, even with the bitterness, I think that that would fall away if you were adding lemon and other fruit flavors to it. Um, you'd really notice the almond forward. So savory baking, this would be delightful. Um, fruit forward. Um, again, I think this would be really good on even like a mango sorbet and then drizzle this on top with a touch of sea salt would be delightful. Um, there's so much you could do with it. Also, um, thinking about roasted sweet potatoes or squash, um, the almond notes would pair really well with the nuttiness of, of like an acorn squash or a Hubbard squash. Um, it would be so good. Um, but then I keep going back to bread. Like, let's make a squash loaf <laughs> with um, papitas in it. And um, there would be so much to, to offer there. I make a boule that has squash and coriander in it in the fall, and it's so tasty. And this oil would be such a good addition or toasted. And then the slathered on top would be, would be so good. Um, definitely lots of possibilities. It's really creamy, but those almond notes, again, are really forward on the front, but you've got this beautiful bitterness that's not overwhelming. And then the nice peppery finish on the back of your palate that, again, it just grows and it's present and it's subtle, subtle in how it sits and just lingers. Um, definitely a persistence to this oil and a beautiful harmony um, to it. Yeah, delightful delightful. If you'd like to learn more about the olive oil critic, stay tuned and feel free to subscribe to my channel to learn more about olive oil from branch to bottle. Thanks and have a great day.